What's up everybody? I'm back once again with another video. This time, once again talking about the Sony X900H, but this time uh, we're talking about how it handles uh, 4K at 120 hertz. And this is a huge issue. This is a deal breaking issue with this TV. And I'm about to demonstrate, you know, exactly why. And right now I'm actually outputting at 60 hertz. And you can see everything is looking real sharp and clear. And when I switch over to 120, I would like you to pay close attention to the letters, the lowercase e's, as well as the lowercase a's on the screen. And also before we do this, I'd like to point out that I'm doing this, in, you know, the, the color depth is 8-bit. Right now at 60 hertz, we have full uh, sampling, RGB sampling, no subsampling. Uh, when I switch over to 120 hertz, we will be seeing 420 uh, chroma subsampling. So that will add to th a degradation in the picture quality a little bit. Um, for the most part, it will just create color artifacts, though. It's not really... That isn't exactly the problem with um, when you see, like, what's going on with the letter A and the letter E. There's, like, a video compression going on um, when you switch to 120 hertz um, to help the TV, I guess, process the image or something. Um... Let's just demonstrate that and I'll talk more about that. So, shaky, I'm sh I know I'm shaky. This clear text as well is almost impossible to read when you switch it. So, let's press apply over here. Let's just try to make it focused. Okay, I guess it's focused. I'm gonna hit apply. And I'm going to keep the changes, and all of a sudden, this text is virtually unreadable. The lowercase e's and a's totally smudged and not properly displayed. It's unacceptable the, that Sony put this out on the market this year. You can see the subsampling happening um, with like that yellow color going on there and the blue, yellow and blue kind of coloring around the text. That's the subsampling. But that scrunched up letter A and letter E, that is the TV's doing. And there's no getting around it as long as you're using the Sony X900H. Um, it's truly unacceptable that Sony put this on the market like this. And they used a processor that uh, I believe that they developed in 2016. Um, it's the, just the regular X1 processor in comparison to like the X1 Ultimate or the even maybe the X1 Extreme. Um, if they used a better processor, you know, maybe things could have been different. Uh, just today, today is, um, January 7th. By the way, everything is up to date. The Sony X900H is up to date, latest firmware. Um, just today, Sony announced their new line of TVs for 2021. Uh, and the X90J and X95J seem to be the equivalent to this one um, for 2021. The X90J is probably the equivalent for this one, and then the 95J would be the equivalent, but also a huge improvement over the X950H of, of 2020, which did not even do um, 4K 120Hz. And it was also even missing um, ATSC 3.0, 
which the X900H is ready for 3.0, uh, ATFC 3.0, it's the new broadcast standard. Um, so the X950H was really lacking this year, wasn't even worth looking at. The 900H obviously was enticing for the gaming features, the 120 hertz, but as you can see, is it worth it? Maybe when you're standing so far away from the screen that, you know, it might not really matter to you, but that's really truly up to you. Um, if you're able to return this TV, I personally would recommend that you do. Um, because your hard-earned money shouldn't be spent on... Well, I, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but... I think that, um, you know, they're making, they're going to put out really much better quality products this year, especially if you're looking for a 4K 120 hertz TV for gaming. Um, pretty much across the board, it's, it's going to be almost the minimum expectation. You could even, I think you can expect a uh, high sense and TCL to have uh, 120 hertz, 4K 120 hertz TVs this year as well. Um, but in 2020, I mean, it was kind of a joke of a year, and I have a feeling that this TV, once it gets its firmware updates for VRR and all that, they're gonna Sony's really gonna try to sweep this thing under the rug, and they're gonna focus more on the 2021 TVs. I mean, obviously they would now that it's 2021, but but to the extent. To the point where it's like this TV may as well have come out in 2019 or 2018. Um, like it's probably not going to get as much support as a 2019 TV might have. Um, for example, if you look at like the LG C9, it's still an incredibly relevant TV and it will remain relevant for probably for years to come with LG. Uh... Yeah, so I would just recommend spending your hard-earned money on, if it's a Sony TV, you know, on, I would wait till their J series, their J line of TVs come out with uh, the new Sony XR processor. Um, but I'm just really not sure how the prices are going to look, especially here in Canada with... Um, I mean, it's going to be just the exchange rate, the, you know, the U S price and then the exchange rate, but it might be more expensive than what this was uh, at the time of it, you know, when it came out, uh, you know, around 1200 bucks Canadian or 1300 Canadian when it, when it first came out, um, really not bad. I mean, But if, if this year's TVs are the same price, then that is going to be a huge value over this. I don't know. It's really up to you. Um, feel free to leave comments, questions, um, suggestions, or your own experience. Uh, just feel free to leave any comments if you'd like. Uh, and thank you for watching. Um, feel free to like this video if you'd like and uh, subscribe. And have a great day. And cheers.